Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 12 of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. It is Friday, and I am so happy to be here connecting with you for another week, creating valuable design conversations. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. In this 12th episode, we are going to converse about beauty in design. So let's start by defining this controversial term that is sometimes difficult to define. Beauty is defined as the quality present in a thing or a person that gives intense pleasure of deep satisfaction to the mind, a combination of qualities such as shape, color, or form that pleases the aesthetic senses, especially the sight. For centuries, philosophers have speculated on the links between perception, beauty, creativity, and pleasure, and in recent years, scientists have learned a great deal about sensory systems. Ed Koner, director of the Johns Hopkins Mind Brain Institute, explains that aesthetics touches on the pinnacle of subjective experience, the relationship between the mind and the body. He states that aesthetic reaction originates in the brain. Coming from this neuroscience approach, I definitely believe beauty is subjective. This explains why I identify beauty as controversial, because we all have individual brains, personal experiences, and process information differently. What is beautiful for you is not necessarily beautiful for me, and vice versa. The main purpose of design is to make something usable when the functional task comes first, and the aesthetics are secondary. The function is first defined by the purpose of the space or object, and the aesthetics depend on the function. There is where the combination of aesthetics and functionality coexist successfully. Remember that design should solve the problem for which it is created. It is truly an art to balance beauty and function. An interior design is a harmony between these two concepts. The allure of a beautifully designed space is unquestionable, but an interior must also serve its intended purpose efficiently first. Here are six design guidelines to enjoy beauty in a space from your own experience, values, and beliefs. Number one. Simple and to the point, functionality is the foundation on which aesthetic is built. No amount of beauty can truly shine if the space designed for relaxation, work, or socializing does not address its intended purpose. Number two, user-centered design. Understanding your needs and preferences in the space you inhabit. Beauty considers the comfort and usability of its occupants, ensuring you feel at ease in your surroundings. 
the emotional appeal helps engage the user to interact with the space faster. Number three, versatility. Environments that are capable of adapting to various contexts and user needs. Spaces that can be used in multiple ways, offering more flexibility and the ability to customize your own experience. Number four, performance. The appeal of a space combines all the principles and elements of design that we have discussed previously. Shape, size, texture, color. What about these ones? Balance, unity, movement, emphasis, and these other ones, contrast, symmetry, proportion, and pattern. A space should be designed in order to satisfy safety, durability, and serviceability. Understanding the overall deterioration and changes in the appearance of materials help to appreciate the story of the space. Number five, culture and context. The location of the space is supported by its history, its people, and its surroundings. The individuality and the local atmosphere provide value to the experience. And number six, you. <laughs> yes, you. Your story, your upbringing, your education, your values and beliefs, your authentic self will capture the beauty of the environment through your own lens. Because beauty is a personal perception and a very personal experience. The perception of aesthetical quality and related awareness of beauty has changed over the years and will continue to change into the future. However, the guidelines I just provided you are universal attributes that are perceived as attractive for the built environment and your overall unique experience. One of my favorite cities in the world is Barcelona, Spain. And I remember when I visited for the first time back in the early 2000s, and I was amazed with the work of Antoni Gaudí. He was a Catalan architect and designer and known as the greatest exponent of Catalan modernism. Gaudí's work has a highly individualized, unique style. Projects like the Sagrada Familia, Park Güell, and Casa Batlló are among his most notable masterpieces. His distinctive style, characterized by freedom of form, voluptuous color, texture, and organic unity, was influenced by neo-Gothic art, oriental techniques, and the decorative style of Art Nouveau architecture, which led to elaborate and ostentatious designs. I visited these three masterpieces during my trip, and I enjoyed every moment I've found in my spatial experience. Inspired by nature, Sagrada Familia is the tallest religious building in Europe. The interior pillars resemble trees, creating a majestic play of light and color through the crown of the trees. It was solid and very impressive. Despite this building not being finished, UNESCO made it a World Heritage Site in 1984 because of its unique architecture and how Gaidi created something so artistic and innovative. Park Guell, stunning gardens and distinct architectural elements, like ornate columns and curvy handrails full of movement, color, and texture. It was simply refreshing and vibrant, but peaceful, peaceful at the same time. On the other hand, Casa Batlló was breathtaking. Let me describe this marine-inspired facade. Sculptors, recycled materials, and different objects converted into art were at play here. The dance of light mixed with shadows over a plethora of ceramic tiles. Stone ornaments and stained glass along with iron and wood were used throughout this masterpiece. One day was not enough to take it all in. It was so spatially and materiality busy, but masterfully done. It was sensual. It was interactive. It was incredibly engaging and beautiful. I love that he believed with conviction that his architectural ability was a gift from God and that his pursuit of excellence in his field will benefit his city and his beloved Catalonia. He said, 
Social excellence can be achieved when everyone uses their own God-given gift. And I certainly agree. My experience was a blend of architecture, nature, and religion. It was original. It was profound. It was so different. It was an immersive experience in each location. The design of Gaudí made me stop, observe, touch, enjoy slowly and intently. Every detail was carefully crafted. Through these spaces, I was able to understand the elevated creative thinking of this man. He was curious, adventurous, passionate, precise, fun. I have Spaniard blood, so culturally, I feel very connected with a lot of the story that has been told in these masterpieces, which enhance my own experience. But if we are talking about beauty in design, it is impossible for me not to mention the incredible work of Antoni Gaudí. Here's a fun fact. Picasso hated his work because he only saw his religious fundamentalism and not the artistic daring which Gaudí had. But here you have an example of what I told you before. Beauty is subjective, individual, and controversial. I have emphasized in architecture, but beauty in design is everywhere. This applies to a car, graphics, websites, a wristwatch, and dresses, packaging, landscapes, new hair color, and poetry are further examples. So when I say everywhere, it's everywhere. Understand this. When design is done right, you don't have to choose between aesthetics and functionality. The space or the object is simply there, and your experience of it accentuates its value. Speaking of creativity and value, I have reason to make this 12th episode my final send-off for Season one of Think Design Provoke the Podcast. I have been blessed with further demand in the design world, which is going to take me away from you for a time. Don't you worry, though. I will be back and ready with further engaging topics and some new ideas for Season two. My hope is that you have found a spark, an idea, or a new thought about the spaces and places that you find yourself surrounded by. Creating relevant content and valuable information for you to consider is my goal. I am passionate about this topic, if you couldn't tell, and I hope to make it contagious for you as well. So with no further ado, I applaud you, my listeners. Much love and gratitude goes out to my audience. I will catch you on the other side. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the Design Conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be back soon to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss or design stories that you want me to develop, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chess to continue the design conversation. I am very active on my Instagram and I will keep you informed about the beginning of season two. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference. Also, Anthony Gaudí's work so you can enjoy it for yourself. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats. And remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. All episodes of season one will remain live, so you can come back and listen to them. I'll chat with you very soon. And remember, everything in the built environment is by design, and you are part of it. Ciao, ciao.